Hello everyone, my name is Matt Scorpion and welcome back to Destiny 2. Now, it is currently Moments of Triumph, which it might not look it, but it is currently active and I'll get into more of that later. But this week's booster, just to start things off, is the new rewards booster for Crucible, which also allegedly also has boosted Crucible rank, now that I look at that too. So, yeah, if you want to just farm out a bunch of Crucible, now is the time. There is no Iron Banner, unfortunately, and there is, doesn't seem to be any other special modes exactly aside from what has been in the past. Um, so there is Checkmate Clash, which I guess is a, a 6 or no, that's a 3v3. But then in terms of Quick Play for 3v3, there's Showdown, and 6v6, Quick Play Rotator is Momentum Control but just straight up control, rumble, and competitive for our base modes. So if you want to just haul out on Crucible, now is the time to do so to rank up the things. Now, in terms of the world. So, like I said, it is currently Moments of Triumph, and I'll go over that real quick. Basically, there's a, an event, which I don't recall if it has anything to do with Eververse. I'll double back to that soon. But essentially, it adds a few things. Now... You'll notice a new seal right here, which is for Moments of Triumph 2023, but it is essentially a double back. There isn't a lot of new stuff to do, per se. It is mostly just doubling back and doing everything. So, going back, there's lots of stuff throughout Lightfall, lots of stuff throughout the Season of Defiance, and the various raids throughout, and then Season of the Deep, Season of the Witch, and last or er, Season of the Wish stuff. So basically, if you're up to date on your seasons, you might have all of this already done. I honestly just have a lot of stuff that's not done just because Season of the Witch is kind of where my free time was spent to other places than Destiny. But of course, if you, compl if you complete it, you have lots of stuff like a Moments Tribe t-shirt, as well as a Sparrow and Ghost Shell that's special. And if you run, um, uh... I guess I haven't run Crota's End or Root of Nightmares, but yeah, if you actually complete this one, you get a last one. But most of most of you, if you like, I said, kept up with the seasonal, might already have the title just ready to go already. So on that note, there isn't much else, but just to double check really quick, and I'll go ahead and do Eververse right off the bat, just in case. Okay, so it doesn't exactly appear like there is Moments of Triumph stuff going on as everything is still the stuff before. Although looking at it, it does seem like we uh, no longer have the Season of the Undying throwback set, but we'll get more into this later. So, the Nightfall for this week. Of course, we do have Nightfalls at Grandmaster, which if you do it at Grandmaster, you'll have a attempt at the Undercurrent Adept, which is the new Arc Waveframe Grenade Launcher, which I haven't gotten this at all. I didn't even look at the perch pool, so I don't think so. Um, if somebody in the comments would actually let me know, is this even worth getting over Wave Splitter? Or was it Wave Splitter? No. Um, uh, wait, it might have been whatever the grenade launcher from, uh, God, no, wave splitter is completely the wrong one. Um, man, I'm drawing a blank, but ever that one from Vow of the Disciple, um, completely forgot what it is, but it's essentially the same gun, just different stats and perks. And on that note, like I said, from Grand Masters, the Adept one is spawning from the European Dead Zone Strike the Lake of Shadows reprised, which is a little bit harder nowadays just because of some of the enemies they threw in there. Modifiers including all three shields, Barrier Unstoppable Champions, Arc Threat for incoming arc damage being boosted, then Grandmaster Modifiers, Extinguish No Radar, Limited Revives as usual, uh, Scorched Earth for more grenades being thrown at you, Chaff for No Radar, Seasonal Overcharge Weaponry, Solar and Strand Surge, as well as Overcharge Machine Guns. So go ahead and plan out accordingly if you wish to take down that nightfall on that same note as well just darting through the rest of it just because gamut nothing new there and we've already covered crucible just because of the booster now throughout the world pretty much it is the usual same as it is for our strike or for our weekly farming raid we currently have the deep stone crypt which means of course all challenges active infinitely farmable if you want to hunt down the red borders or somehow still need eyes of tomorrow now you can run there but then in terms of dungeons and everything else, our weekly farming dungeon is the Pit of Heresy, which is probably the least farmable thing. Yes, it does have reprised Dreaming City weapons in there now, but at the same time, they aren't really anything to go home about, and they're also not exclusive to here. You can earn them from literally anywhere in the Dreaming City. I'm talking about the wrong dungeon. That's Pit of Heresy. <laughs> oh man, my mistake. I, I had a long day. Apologies. But similar stuff. 
It does have some weapons that are unique to this dungeon, but at the same time, there's nothing exactly unique. And Xenophage is the weapon, and that is a quest thing, so there's no real random drop. But then, in terms of the rest of the world, just starting about, starting with Eternity, just while we are here, Dares of Eternity Legend Mode is Hive, Fallen, and Valus to Arc for rounds 1, 2, and 3. And for our Legends tab, we have, for our Rotation Exotic Mission, Seraph Shield, which is pretty nifty in case you want to get either Revision Zero, Revision Zero or anything from Season 19, which is Ikelos weapons, as well as the Seraph weapons from back then. And then, in terms of everything else, same thing with Crota's End. Our current challenge is one for all, which is Crota Challenge. Basically, if you have to knock down his shield, everyone holding a sword has to do it at once. If I recall, Master Mode is at least three people. And it is, of course, discipline-focused armor for Master Mode Crota. While we are here, the Vault of Glass Active Challenge is the Out of Its Way Challenge, which is Templar Challenge. And the King's Fall Challenge is the Devious Thievery Challenge, which I believe is War Priest Challenge. I also still forget for certain, though. The Dreaming City Challenge mode is currently Witch Witch, which I think is Shirochi or other one. No, no, I think it's uh, Vault, maybe. I, I honestly forget. It's been so long since I even thought about those challenges. And then a link to the chain for Garden of Salvation. And for Vow of the Disciple, darting all over the place, Vow of the Disciple currently has base information, which is Second Encounter Challenge. And then for Root of Nightmares, wrapping it all up, we have the Illuminated Torment Challenge for Root of Nightmares, which is First Encounter. Now, while we're on Neomuna, our weekly farming mission is the No Time Left, which is basically, I think, either this... I think it's the second to last mission. I believe it's uh, either the last mission or the second to last. I Again, Lightfall was so forgetful. <laughs> I don't even remember. Then the Vex Incursion Zone is the Liming Harbor in the Neo Muna, or Liming Harbor on Neo Muna for Incursion Zone, which of course means it's the annoying one. No, actually, it's the fun one. It's the Sparrow section for the partition this week. Then for everything else, uh, just starting off, one last thing to check: um, seasonal stuff. Of course, the Coil is still active. The rotation for this week being. The first steps in the Temple of the Queen's Wrath, and Divining Hall, Sensorium in the Pavilion, and Observatory. This is the first time Sensorium, or there has just been more than one of everything. Or there has just been one of something every time. And like I said before, I'm pretty sure there is nothing new on Starcrossed. Of course, everything is out. Modifiers being a Solar Surge and a straight Stasis Surge, a little Fire and Ice, but incoming Void Damage being boosted as always. But, like I said, I don't think there's anything new to hunt for, so don't exactly jump at that unless you need something from there. Then, our weekly challenges. So, this is week 10. Now, keep in mind, I know we have a double long season, and I would expect it to be extended just for the sake of extension. But, this is typically the end of the line when it comes to our uh, weekly challenges being reward or getting new ones, excuse me. But, on that same note, keep an eye out for them just in case. So we have Nyamkara Hunt, which is find all seven of Queen Mara's loyal companions, which I guess is just the uh, star-crossed cat, the star cats that you find throughout the Dreaming City now. And also Throne World activities for in the Throne World, completing bounties and earn progress by, or completing bounties and earn bonus progress by completing, um, man, that just sounds, okay, complete bounties and progress the challenge by completing patrols, public events, and looting law sectors. Man, that threw me for a loop. Then last rights for getting ability final blows, increasable gambit, or the vanguard bonus progress for guardian final blows as always. Most dangerous play for, or prey for defeating guardians in gambit or the crucible. Momentum crash for defeating guardians in momentum control, earn bonus progress for the zone advantage. Bank kill repeat uh, earn points by banking moats, defeating blockers, and defeating guardians in gambit. And then calibrating long range, Calibrate long-range weapons, including pulse rifles, bows, and trace rifles. Bonus progress granted for defeating guardians. And trace rifles and pulse rifles. I would have think that would have been bows, scout rifles, and sniper rifles. But, you know, I digress. Getting into the rest of the world, of course, I'm just going to dart over to Eververse. So while we have some time, went over there already. So on the front page, we have two shaders. Iridescent Chair... Carite, uh, which I'm not sure how to say, but this is a very sparkly gem one. It does kind of give it a gem uh, texture at the same time, so I might say this if you want to look very Dreamy City Amethyst. Then we also have Lucid from Season of the Risen, which is, I guess, just another one to look almost like the Lucid Hive. 
Then we also have the Warsat Arrival from Season 10, which is to look like, of course, a Warsat burning on re-entry. And a shader for the uh, Monte Carlo, the Western Front, which is sort of supposed to make it look like a PPSH from real life. Which I have kind of been waiting for this one to come around. I regretted not getting it, but didn't feel like spending silver on it, so I can spend some Bright Dust for it. Then we also have the Splish Splash emote from Season of the Splicer, which it's pretty much self-explanatory by what you see in front of you. But then it's also another one's awkward ones that just ends. It doesn't have any sort of final an animation. Then for our shaders and flares, we have Safety First, which is, of course, a basically looking like a traffic cone look. And then we also have Chrome Stock from Season of the Drifter, which is similarly so. It has some chrome, it has some nice blue to match it, and it looks very sleek and clean. Then we also have Iridescent Coral from Season of the Undying, which very much so. Similarly uh, ex uh, shiny, except it has a bit of metallic shine to it. And we also have Welded Brass, which is one of my favorite ones uh, for a dark look. Gives you a nice color, uh, or a nice dark color, and a dark purple glow. Then we also have for our transmatch, we have the Reef Oracle from Forsaken, aka Season of the Outlaw. So it looks like that. And then we also have Minotaur Effects from Season, on, or Season of Opulence, which, while it says Minotaur, it really doesn't look like a Minotaur. It just kind of is a building guardian. And the Swirly Leaf Entrance, which is another one of those blue rarity transmats. They made another color and exchanged it to a purple transmat. And for the rest of the big ticket items, we have the Cozy Campfire, which is, of course, one of those ones where you just sit around a fire and do nothing. And for the case of one or two of these Guardians almost burning themselves. VR Exploration, which is basically every person being an idiot when they get in VR, like always. But another one that, well, actually, for once, it just ends. There, for, for once, it actually has an ending animation. And we also have the Firebreak Shell, which is a part of a kind of firefighter's look that is back from Season of the Splicer. Then we also have the Wanderer's, ri Wanderer ri Wanderer's Rings from... Oh, God, I'm saying it wrong still. Wanderer's Wings from Season of the Lost, Season 15. A pretty nifty-looking ship, but it kind of looks a little awkward, a little derpy. Then we also have Cosmo Starling from Season of Splicer, which is meant to look like a kind of retro vision of the future look Sparrow, which I am a fan of, uh, just because it reminds you of the Shelby Cobra, but... um. It is a bit blocky, chunky. And we also have Kronos Exegis, which is basically the Vex look for No Time to Explain. Which does look very fitting, considering it does get that, um, well, obviously, time portals that shoot from another dimension. And also just the look of the Vex gate with that. And lastly, and least is always, a Crow Projection, which is just a orange bird if you're on Solar, or a different color bird if you're on any other class. Then, wrapping some things up, we got Banshee44 with his current weapons, Lunalata, which I've talked about a lot. Although Distractions is kind of pointless, Headstone is pretty nifty, would recommend it if you want something to mess around with. Although, Endgame, I also would say, find a better bow. And then we also have Iota Draconis, which is similarly so, a fun one to mess around with. Nifty perks like Under Pressure and Cornered, that helps stability and charge right for you Crucible folks. But on the same note, it is high impact, slowest to charge, and is quite outdated in terms of its perk set, and still, like I said, no origin trait, so it's hard to vouch for. Same thing for True Prophecy. Well, this little setup is pretty damn nifty for the Crucible crowd, whether it's just full range, opening shot, or just being a kinetic aggressive frame hand cannon, it is still quite outdated, and I would love to see it redone. Another thing for legal action, some solid enough perks, but at the same time, still, like I said, I'm repeating myself a lot, out dated it's hard to really push this to anyone when almost anything else in its archetype could be outdated or or could be outdone by something that's literally just newer and then we also have palmyra b which similarly so is one of the first craftable rocket launchers in the game pretty solid if you need something to start with it's pretty cheap to make if i don't or if i recall properly only two red borders but at the same time it is one of the weakest rocket launchers you can get Although, hot swapping with Iga Zanagi's Burden is still a go-to for a lot of people, so this could be a temporary one until you get better auto-loading rocket launchers. Then, wrapping everything up with Ada's shaders, we have Gold Leaf from Season of Opulence, which is a bit deceiving on its kind of shader, although there is gold, there isn't a lot of leaf. Like, literally, I think it's just the pearlescent from a few angles gives it a green hue, but mostly just straight-up gold. Then we also have Arctic Dreamscape, which if you want to look like an Arctic Commando with a digital Arctic Camo, there you go. Although it looks a little bit weird when you have more fantasy style armor as opposed to actual armor armor. 
and Dead Orbit Resurrection, another one of the many black and whites that looks really good. It's just an old faction shader though, so it was rare, but at the same time, black and white never looked bad that, ge that generally. With that, that is everything in the reset. Now, like I said, Moments of Triumph is pretty short and sweet. It never was that complicated. Usually just came with a few um, interesting cosmetics, and from that point, a just checklist of things to go through from the past year, or, uh, or a new activity for a temporary time, although I'm not sure if I'm also missing up uh, Moments of Triumph and Solstice thinking back on it. With that, my name is Matt Scorpion, and I'll see you in the next video.